Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as far, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. To such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. And we're ending there at the end of verse 19. And as always, we just trust that the Lord's blessing will be upon his word this evening for his name's sake. Thank God tonight, that last song that was sung in our midst tonight, it is finished, the battle is over. It is finished, there'll be no more war. It is finished, an end to the conflict. It is finished, and Jesus is Lord. And we praise God, and we thank the Lord tonight that we come before a God who is, as we picked up the reading here, he is plenteous in mercy. A God who sent his son into this world. A God who in justice sent his son to bear that justice for you and for me. Sin cannot go without being punished. But in love and in mercy, God sent his son who bore that punishment who took our judgment upon himself at the cross of Calvary. And tonight, praise God, we look at the cross. We think about the love that was demonstrated and displayed there. We think about the heart of a God that would do that for a creation that had turned their back upon him. And we come into this little psalm. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Praise God, he is slow to anger and he is plenteous in mercy. We thank God tonight we have a message like that to proclaim. And we want to concentrate for just a short time this evening before we draw our service to a close. We want to concentrate on God's mercy as we see it in the verses on the page before us here this evening. Let me just give you one or two headings as we work our way through. The first heading is very simply this. We see the manifestation of his mercy. And thank God in manifesting his mercy, whenever we think about the cross of Calvary, God has mercy that's adequate. Bless his holy name for all needs. Verse 8 here, where we picked up, says he is plenteous in mercy. And that simply means it's mercy that's abundant. It means that it's mercy, praise God, that is, is overflowing. And you know, this contrast, we didn't read it, but if you go back into verse 6 of the psalm, it says, the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his way unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. But he executes righteous and judgment. And then we come over into verse 8. And verse 8 contrasts completely with that. Because thank God tonight, although he executes judgment, praise God, he shows mercy. More mercy. Bless his wonderful and holy name. So we see the manifestation of his mercy. But let's just think for a moment or two about that. Because God's mercy is it, it's not just adequate to meet every need. But as he manifests that mercy, his mercy is indescribable. His mercy is incomprehensible. There's many words that we could use like that that would try to convey to us exactly how great the mercy of God is really is. Let me just share with you for a moment what God's mercy has really done. 
You see, if it wasn't for his mercy tonight, first of all, let me say sparing mercy. Sparing mercy. It would mean that we would all go to hell. We would all be on our way to a lost eternity. But thank God his mercy is manifest. There is sparing mercy. How do you describe that? How do you explain that? We sit in this building this evening and for so many of us, we can say, thank God he has spared us. He has spared us the judgment of eternity through what he has done at the cross in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we have sparing mercy. We don't just have sparing mercy, but praise God, we have inviting mercy. Inviting mercy. You see, none would ever hear the gospel if it wasn't for the fact that God invites us and enables us to hear and to comprehend that great gospel. Not only have we that, but thank God we also have saving mercy. You see, no sinner's prayer would ever be answered if it wasn't for the fact that somewhere in the mercy of God, he wants to save. There is saving mercy, and he's able to save to the uttermost all who will come unto God by him. Sparing mercy, inviting mercy, saving mercy. There's also upholding mercy, because none, would, none of us would be able to live the Christian life if it weren't for the mercy of God upon us in the fact that the Holy Spirit enables us to live in the way that he wants us to live. And so thank God tonight there's upholding mercy. There's also consoling mercy. All would be swallowed up by grief if it wasn't for the fact of what he does. He consoles, he blesses in that way. There's infinite mercy. All would be cut off from the earth. We could think about that one. And there's also everlasting mercy. None of us would ever go to heaven if God's mercy wasn't manifested towards us in that way. And that's why I say tonight, his mercy is indescribable. His mercy is incomprehensible because those are just certain things that are picked out that attach themselves to the fact that if we are saved tonight, that's how we have experienced this mercy in all of these different ways and facets. But folks, add it to that tonight. The Bible says he makes the sun to shine. The Bible says he makes the rain to fall on the good and the bad, on the just and on the unjust. And every single day we wake up on this planet as he affords us that time. We wake up on this planet and we experience the mercy of Almighty God, every single one of us in our lives. And it's sad tonight to think that anyone would experience that everyday mercy that he bestows upon us and yet fail to experience the other facets of his mercy that we've just been thinking about. That inviting mercy, that sparing mercy, that saving mercy, that upholding mercy. And tonight, praise God in this place, that's the mercy that's extended to every single one who sits amongst us this evening. And can I just say, if you don't know him tonight as your Lord and Savior, he doesn't come into this service to condemn you. He doesn't come into this service to put you down in any way. But by his presence, he's in their midst tonight to show you how merciful he longs to be towards your heart, towards your soul, and towards your experience. And so we see he manifests his mercy, the manifestation. But in the following verses, we don't just see the manifestation of that mercy. In the following verses, we see the measurement of that verse, mercy. You see, listen to it again. In verses, verse 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. And that's what we've just been looking at. He has manifested his mercy towards us like that. 
You see, if he dealt with sin tonight on an individual level, where would any of us stand? But in his mercy, praise God, he doesn't do that. So he manifests his mercy in that he forgives our sin and he forgives our iniquity. But he measures his mercy in the way that he does that. Because the verses then go on and they say, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Then he says in verse 12, As far as the east is, I think this was quoted, John quoted this, I think, in his prayer this morning in the service. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. You know, John Phillips in his commentary on this psalm, he puts that like this. He says, you take a point on the earth, as high as the heavens are above the earth. He says, you take a point on the earth, and he says, you draw a line vertically. And that line goes right up through our atmosphere. That line goes right up into outer space vertically, and it's infinite. It goes as far as space allows it to go. And he says, that's how high God's mercy is above the earth. But then he says in the next verse, he says, you take the horizontal measurement as far as the east is from the west. And you don't need me to tell you that you can go around this globe and you can keep traveling east and you can keep going round and round and round and round and you're still going east. It's not like north and south where you have a north pole and you start to go south again. You can travel east and you'll always be going east. And John Phillips puts it this way. He says he draws a line from earth to heaven that's infinite. He draws a line horizontally from east to west that can't finish. It's indimensional or on-dimensional. I don't know which, which word is right to use. And he says where the two lines cross each other. He says that's the place called Calvary. And the mercy that he shows to us that's high like that flows upwards from Calvary. And the mercy that he shows to us that is wide like that flows outwards from Calvary. And you see, friends, thank God tonight, Calvary is the seat of the mercy of God. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day because mercy flows. Because blood was shed. Because a sacrifice was made for sin. Because the judgment of God, the justice of God, was executed upon his own son when he took our place. And tonight, from that cross where those lines meet, thank God, mercy is extended. He measures his mercy. And in those two verses, as it speaks about his mercy... God has spoken about those measurements in dimensions. You see, we can look tonight and they'll, they'll measure space and they'll talk about so many light years and all of those things. We think about the circumference of the earth. If it hasn't changed size, whenever I was at school, it was something like 25,000 miles. Nowadays, I think the earth has become a much smaller place because of technology. But you keep going round and round. There's dimensions attached to his mercy. But if that's not enough, you drop down the psalm to, 17, to verse 17. And here's what he says again. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting unto everlasting. You see, if, it's, if he has used dimensions to talk about his mercy, now he speaks about duration to talk about his mercy. From everlasting unto everlasting. You see, thank God tonight, it's not just a dimensional thing, but it's a thing that endures. It's a thing that will, will be there from everlasting unto everlasting. Bless his wonderful and bless his holy name. He measures his mercy. He measures his mercy. But let me finish. Because that verse also tells us that he maintains his mercy. Verse 17. From everlasting on to everlasting. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. And so he manifests that mercy. He gives us the measurements of that mercy. And praise God, bless his wonderful and holy name, he will maintain that mercy. 
Because, friends, that's the heart of God tonight. A God of love. A God of grace. A God of forgiveness. A God who is plenteous in mercy. There's a story told about a young lady. One day she left her work. She was on her way walking home as she normally did. She always had to walk her way through a park. And on this particular day she was walking through the park and there was a photographer there. And he was taking photographs of people who were walking past. And he stopped her as she was walking past and he says to her, excuse me, he says, but I'm a photographer. This is a number of years ago. And he says to her, he says, would, would, could I take your photograph? And she asked him what it would be and he told her and she says, that's fine. And she gave him the money. And he took out this Polaroid. Do you remember the Polaroid cameras? You took the photograph and the, the photograph shot out of the bottom of it. Remember that? And so he took out this camera and he took her photograph and he pulled it off the camera she paid him his money, and he gave her the photograph. Now, if you remember those, it took a minute or two for them to develop. Do you remember that? You got the thing out of the camera, you couldn't see anything until it got a chance to develop. And so she walked away with the photograph, and whenever she went a little further along, she was actually leaving the park, and by that stage, the, 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 the thing in her hand had developed, and she looked at herself, and she decided, I'll turn and go back, I'm not happy. And so she went back into the park, made her way back along the pathway, and she found the photographer where he was. And she says to him, she said, I want to speak to you. She said, I'm just not a bit happy about this. And he says, what are you not happy about? And she says to him, she says, look at the photograph. And she, she reached him the photograph. And she says, I'm, I'm not just happy with this photograph. She says, you haven't done me justice. And so she passed him the photograph and he looked at the photograph and he looked at her and he looked back at the photograph and he looked at her and he says, dear, it's not justice you need, it's mercy. <laughs> and folks, we say that and we laugh at that. But I wonder, have you ever seen the picture of your life? I wonder, have you ever seen what your life really looks like with the filth of sin that's there. With the degradation that's there. I wonder, have you ever really taken a look at your heart, at your life, at that Polaroid image of what you really look like? And we have a God tonight who offers mercy. And here's where I finish. You see, the God tonight who expresses his mercy in this way and the God tonight who tells us about that mercy. Let me say, God's mercy calls forth a response from your heart and mine. And you see, tonight it is not justice that we need, but thank God justice has been done at the cross. Tonight it's mercy we need. We look at ourselves, if we were to look at ourselves truthfully and honestly, a God of holiness, a God of purity, a God of such glory, if we really were to look at ourselves, we would simply say, how could someone like that have anything to do with us? And yet on tonight, tonight he, he expresses that mercy towards us. And because he does that, that mercy demands a response. It demands a response. His mercy transcends time as well as space. But his mercy tonight is conditional. Because the psalm verses says here twice, it's upon them that fear him. Can I ask you tonight in closing, do you fear him? Is he your God? Is he your Savior? Do you fear, whenever it talks about fearing him, it talks about reverence. That's really what it means. Have you revered him enough in your life to have asked him to be your Savior in the light of what he has done just for you? You know, I often think about the cross of Calvary 
I often think about the statement that John the Baptist made, the declaration that he made about our Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever Jesus was embarking upon his earthly ministry, John the Baptist one day looked at him and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And we look at that and we think about the cross. And we think about how many people are saved because of the cross. We think of the effect that the cross has had upon the world right down through the ages. And it's easy to comprehend him like that. The one whom God sent for man's sin. But I often think we can get caught up in that and we fail to see the reality of the cross. Because whilst, yes, he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, dear one, let me say this to you. He's the Lamb of God who died to take away your sin. Just yours. Just yours. And if you had been the only person living, and you've heard this said probably a dozen times before, if you had been the only person living on this planet in sin, Christ would die, would still have died upon that cross just for you. And you see, he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But I thank God tonight. He's the Lamb of God that took away my sin. And so many of us sit in this gathering and we can say exactly the same thing. We thank God he is the Lamb that God sent and each one of us if we're saved, can say, he took away my sin. Amen. Isn't that what we can say tonight? But could you be sitting here, and as yet, he hasn't taken away your sin? Because you haven't revered him enough to look at that cross and to see what Jesus did because of the judgment of God. And to think about the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness and the salvation that he offers because of what Jesus did upon that cross. And dear one, he did that just for you. And tonight, just like that lady in the picture that we, we laugh about, we look at the picture of our lives. And if God was doing right, we would receive justice. And we would be lost for all of eternity. But God instead gives us mercy, whereby we can be forgiven. And his mercy will endure forever and forever and will take us to be with him. Do you know him tonight? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Because his mercy endures forever. His mercy, praise God, is abundant. And dear one, he extends that mercy to you this very evening. Will you respond to that? And will you take him as your Savior? Let's just bow in a moment's prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Where do you stand? And you know exactly where you do stand because tonight you're in this gathering. You're either saved or you're not saved. And tonight we are here to tell you that you can be saved. A finished work that the group sang about earlier. A finished work. And that work was wrought and that work was finished just for you. And tonight we ask you, will you put your faith, will you put your trust in Jesus? And as always, I'm just going to allow a moment or two for you to ponder that truth, to ponder that question. And you make your decision what you will do with Jesus. That's exactly what Pilate will be coming up to Easter, God willing, in a few weeks' time. And that's exactly what Pilate asked the crowd. What will I then do with Jesus? What will you do with him tonight? Why don't you just surrender your heart and your life and ask him to be your savior and ask him to forgive 
your sin, here and now. And praise God if you mean that. He will meet with you and his mercy will touch your life and you will be saved for time and for eternity. Just a moment and then I'm going to pray. You ponder that. You respond to that because respond you will one way or the other and we trust that you will trust him tonight to be your saviour and your Lord. Praise God. Lord, you know every single heart that's bowed before you here this evening. We just thank you for a sense of your presence in our meeting this evening. Holy Spirit, we pray that you, that you will do, Lord, what only you can do. Lord, we can't save a soul. But we thank you tonight that you are here and you can. And so we commit every soul, we commit every life to you now. And Lord, we pray, come, reveal Jesus to lives that don't know Savior and Lord tonight. Lord, we pray that you will come and reveal the truth of the cross, the reality of the cross, the love of God. And Lord, draw precious souls unto yourself, we pray. For your people, Lord, we thank you again this evening for that great mercy that we have received. Lord, help us never to take that mercy for granted. And yet, Lord, you know our frame. We are but dust. And you know we slip, we fail, we do all kinds of things. And we thank you, Lord, that there's mercy there and grace to meet us in every time of need. We thank you for that tonight. We commit every single life to you now. And we simply say, have your way in every one of our hearts. Because we ask it, we give you thanks. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.